What is up guys, Steve here. And in today's video, I'm going to be going over whether Ethereum is still a good investment here in late 2024. If you like this content, make sure to like, comment, subscribe because on this channel, when I hit 2000 subscribers, which is less than 100 subscribers away, I'm going to be giving 100 USDC to one lucky subscriber who comments down below and follows me on Twitter. Link in the description. So, is Ethereum dead and is Invest Answers, James from Invest Answers, wrong about Ethereum? And more importantly, how can we become financially free through crypto and through assets like Ethereum and many other assets within crypto? Here lies an opportunity, guys, here in crypto. If you seize this chance, you can finally be free from the shackles that is the financial system. And what's more, th more important than this is that assets like Ethereum are inherently less risky than other crypto assets that are more up and coming and new. What I want to bring to light in this video is that some of the best investors know that risk decreases when assets decrease in price if you are buying at this current time because as you may know Ethereum is lower on the risk curve in crypto and has also not run up as much as other assets. So we want to know, is it a great time to get into Ethereum and why? And oftentimes when assets are lower, it's less risky to buy them. And just to let you know, this channel is dedicated to becoming financially free. And I teach you how to do so through various different ways in crypto that can make you thousands of dollars per month, which would set you financially free. So this includes staking in DeFi, airdrops, trading, and long-term holds. If you go through my videos, I outline how to make thousands of dollars per month through all of these avenues, which I call the four-legged stool. And just to let you know, I am actually inspired by Invest Answers, James from Invest Answers, retire on a series of videos where he outlines how to, how to retire on various crypto assets, such as Solana, and if you see here, um, on a budget of $5,500 per month, which is pretty modest, you can, you know, you can live in a urban, suburban city, not, not quite a New York or an LA or, you know, it, or in the downtown areas of those, of those cities. But if you lived in a suburban area that's lower in uh, cost of living, you only need you know, in a bull case, you only need around 150 Solana. Or if you're staking Solana and you're not so bullish, you only need a 500-ish Solana. But this, this video is actually on Ethereum and why Ethereum is such a great investment at this time. We all know that a lot of influencers in the space have shifted their thoughts over to, you know, Ethereum is not so great. We want to get into up and coming assets like Solana or Sui or some of the other L1s and meme coins and stuff. But I want to put this into perspective for you guys. And firstly, I want to say Invest Answers has in the past said that he sold his entire his entire Ethereum bag so that he can buy Solana instead. His thesis is the black hole soul. Basically, he believes that all dApps in DeFi will run on Solana rather than Ethereum. And I'm not throwing shade at James, but last cycle, everyone said the same thing about Bitcoin. They said that Bitcoin was slow, ancient technology that no one wanted. But what people didn't realize was that the Bitcoin network effect, you know, the fact that it brought so many people to believe in it was needed as the king and backbone, backbone of all of crypto. Without Bitcoin, there is no crypto. So the network effects, the belief in a certain asset is what keeps it together. And that I believe the same for Ethereum. I believe that in the same way, there's a reason why Ethereum is the number two asset in crypto and that so many people have believed in it, have put their money in it. And that's why the market cap is so big. And this is why I believe it consistently ranks high in DeFi activity and total value locked. If you add in the amount of activity going on on layer twos, on ETH, it is off the charts. And in, in the past, we've seen base, um, which is run by Coinbase, go up the charts and total value locked and DeFi activity. What I also want to add is the fact that institutions are highly interested 
now in the ETH ETF. The ETH ETF was passed earlier this year, and it's, it was kind of a sleeper compared to the Bitcoin ETF. But a lot of institutions are highly, highly interested in it because it provides a 4% staking yield per year. And I, they believe that, you know, since Bitcoin doesn't have that, it may be the second best crypto asset to invest in when it comes to ETFs in the traditional stock market. The other thing I want to bring up is this ETH to BTC chart. As you can see here, ETH is at a ratio of 0 0.039, which is historically a bit low. And what that represents is that it's a great time, most likely, to shift from Bitcoin to sell Bitcoin and get into ETH. And that's because it is now retesting these levels from the prior cycle prior to when, you know, ETH took off. So you can see here um, in the past cycle, the halving was around here, this area in, in uh, April 2020 and or April or May 2020. And then shortly thereafter, it took off. ETH went up to around 0.08 uh, ratio. And now it's been on a steady decline the past couple years. And now it's only at 0.039, which is an ex excellent place to get in. I believe that um, Ethereum will be around a, a ratio of 0.03 to 0.04. And many others believe the same thing. Now, it is a great value territory compared to Bitcoin at this time. But I believe it's going to go a little bit lower before everything just goes parabolic. And we can see this because Bitcoin's dominance uh, usually increases to 60% or more um, during this time, while altcoins uh, suffer in comparison to uh, when you take Bitcoin as a denominator. You can see this on the chart here. You can see we're currently at around 58.89% um, uh, BTC dominance. And usually, if you see in the, in the past cycles around... Uh, April 2020 to April 2020-ish, um, 2020 Bitcoin dominance was around 60 to 70 percent, somewhere in there. And I think that we're on our final leg up. We're going to move up into the mid 60s in, in terms of Bitcoin dominance. But, you know, it, it might not be a, a bad time to get in to um, Ethereum right now because, you know, when Bitcoin dominance peaks, that is when the shift happens into the rotation happens into altcoins and Ethereum is the king of altcoins. Let's not forget that. And Ben Cowan, if you know him from his channel into the cryptoverse, says ETH to BTC will go lower to anywhere from 0.03 to 0.04 before taking off in this bull run. And Bitcoin dominance tops out around 60 to 70 percent range. And TLDR, what I'm trying to say is Ethereum right now is heavily undervalued when compared to Bitcoin and it's a great opportunity in this mar in these markets. In addition, Ethereum has a roadmap in what Vitalik Buterin calls the surge. Basically, they're trying to get up to 100 TPS and much of this is facilitated by layer 2 transactions. And as we know, base in the base ecosystem is one of the most uh, adopted layer twos on the ETH ecosystem. And I think Coinbase can really um, get people to transact on Ethereum more and more. Now, the reason why I make this video is because many influencers within the space, they see the price of Ethereum stagnate and they assume things. They, they assume the worst. So many influencers, including Invest Answers, James from Invest Answers, who I'm featuring in this video, um, Ran Nooner from Crypto Banter, CTO Larson, many others really. Just there's there's so many that they've all dumped their ETH positions for something like Solana. But I think that they're really really missing out on one of the best risk to reward plays this cycle. And I want to point out that it's usually darkest before the dawn, and these folks are going to be missing out on one of the biggest breakouts this cycle. And the reason why I say this is because if we really take a look at the total value locked on each each chain, Ethereum is at the top of the list and then everything below it, like the, the top five out of the, the next six on the list 
are on all ethereum based chains you know solana has also has 5.8 billion and you know they're the biggest non ethereum based chain because of so much meme coin activity that's been going on solana but when you take a look at tron BSC, Binance Smart Chain, and BASE. And BASE has already surpassed many of the Ethereum-based chains and gone into number one on the number one L2 on Ethereum. And the reason why this is so important is because BASE is run by Coinbase, which is one of the biggest exchanges um, in the US and in the world. What I'm trying to say is that Coinbase would not be investing in a layer two on Ethereum if they didn't actually believe that Ethereum had any kind of trajectory to become the king of altcoins. I mean, they could have done this on Solana, for example. The other thing is many institutions are looking into Ethereum and believe in Ethereum more so than, you know, an up, up and coming chain like Solana or Sui or anything like that they want to put their money in a sound ETF that has 10 years worth of positive history and people backing the Ethereum chain. Because Ethereum came out about nine years ago, almost 10 years ago at this point, and it's never gone down. The The transactions have always always worked. So and And people trust it. People believe that Ethereum is the king of altcoins. It's just that lately... There has been more buzz into the Solana ecosystem because meme coins have really taken off this cycle. And since people want to transact on memes and they can get in and out of positions way quicker with less transaction fees, they have decided to transact on Solana for memes. But that doesn't mean that in terms of DeFi applications and real world applications, utilities, that Ethereum doesn't have a place because as you can see when it comes to total value locked on ethereum and all the ethereum based layer twos you can't hold a candle between solana and ethereum ethereum just outpaces solana in many many ways now i am an investor and i'm heavy in solana and solana memes but that doesn't mean that ethereum doesn't have its place and that's why i say it's better to get in now and get in hard and ignore all this noise. Ethereum does have a place. And I, I believe that these uh, influencers are just, you know, trying to clickbait a lot of people and kind of steering them into the wrong direction. The last thing I want to bring up is that although Ethereum is the best risk to reward, and it's an easy 3x this cycle, 3 to 4x from these prices, that you should also look into up and coming narratives. And since you can see this whiff hat, uh, dog with hat hat on my head. You already know that I'm into the memes. Um, the number one meme on Ethereum is Pepe. I'm an investor in Pepe. My Pepe position has easily done it. I don't know, 10x or more, maybe even a 20x. Um, I got in super early on a dip about a year and a half ago. And when it comes to base memes, you want to get into Brett. When it when it comes to when it comes to Solana memes, you want to get into Whiff. And currently, there's been a trend where Murad memes have taken off. So you want to take a look at these as well. SPX, Giga, and Popcat. If you get into any of these names, you're probably going to do pretty well this cycle. But make sure to get in on a hefty, hefty dip. Because these are meme coins. They can skyrocket and do multiple Xs in a single day. But they can also drop by... 70 to 80 percent in, in a day so get in when they drop 70 to 80 percent but if you like this video make sure to comment down below follow me on twitter and subscribe to the channel i'll see you guys in the next video